Okay, this is just a very quick and basic tutorial on how to add sound to your SteamVR environment using the Hammer Source 2 editor. I'm going to cover how to make your sound loop using Soundscape and Sound Events. I'll put a link in the description to the developer page for more detail of the tutorials. Okay, let's launch SteamVR. Create a new add on. Let's call it Test. Now, I don't have my headset connected. So we can't just launch it here. So we need to copy the launch command line. Now we need to open command prompt. In search bar, just type CMD. Open command prompt and paste what you copied. Now delete the following. And press enter. There we go, now we're in the Assets Browser. Now, this is convenient because you don't have to have your headset connected all the time. Now we want to understand where all the files go and how compilation works. So let's take a little look at this. So let's go to our SteamVR folder, Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Steam VR. Tools, SteamVR Environments. First, let's understand where to put the sound file. I'll be using a WAV file because you cannot loop MP3s. And then go to Content, Steam Tours Add-ons, our test that we have created. Now, if it doesn't already exist, we have to create a folder called Sounds. And that's where you put your sound files in. So let's paste it. Okay, now back to the Assets Browser. Now our sound files should automatically been compiled to a VSD file and appear in our Assets Browser. So let's search for it. There it is. Let's play it. As we can hear, it plays one time and stops, so it's not looped. Now to make our sound loop, we need to add markers to our WAV file. And to do that, we're going to use a program called Wevozar. You can Google it, it's free. So let's open it up. Drag your sound file in. Go to Tools, Loop, Create Loop Points. Now make sure you save your file to your Sounds folder. Let's call it sound zero one loop. And that's it. Now it automatically should have been compiled and appear in our assets browser. So now let's test it, see if it loops. Perfect. Okay, let's hop into the hammer editor. File new. Set a new info player start entity. And create a simple geometry. Now we're going to start with a soundscape. So let's create a new entity. Class ENV Soundscape. Now the soundscape will be triggered if you get in touch with a ball. Now to keep it simple, let's just resize the ball. So our start point is within the ball and the sound should start automatically. Now double click on the object to open the object properties. Now we're going to give our soundscape a name. Let's call it test sound. Now we have to do a little bit of scripting. Now let's go to the game folder.
Steam Tours add-ons, test, and open the scripts folder. Now here, open the Soundscapes template text file. I'm using WordPad, you can use any editor. Now here, change the name to your Soundscape, in our case, Test Sound. I'll delete this line position so that the sound will start automatically. Now finally, add the name of your sound file, in our case, sound01 loop.vsnd. Save and close. Now let's save our project. We'll call it test map. Press F9 and build the map. Well, that's it. Now we have a loop soundscape sound. So next we'll add a sound by triggering a sound event. Now let's get rid of the soundscape. Create a new entity. Point sound event. We have to give it a name so that we can trigger it. I'll call it my sound. Sound event is test sound. And activate start on spawn. Now to trigger this sound, I'll just use the mesh that I have here to keep it simple. So let's turn it into an entity. Control T. Open properties. It should be a trigger multiple. Let's go to Outputs, Add, Output on Touching, Trigger My Sound, and Start the Sound. Now again, we have to do a little bit of scripting, this time under the content directory. Let's go content, Steam Tours add-ons, test, sound events. Let's open this file in an editor and enter your code. Save. Save your map. F9, build. And we're done. Now, I hope this was helpful. For any feedback, just leave a comment.